Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back! Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere! Peace! Peekaboo, I see you, because I'm YouTube famous now! Available in 2039, or 49, the age I'm gonna be this year. The album, God, I cannot believe I'm gonna be 49, that's so crazy. The album, Dad, <clears throat> AF, the request edition, and this one goes out to Sarah Louise that requested this song yesterday on my Twitter. <clears throat> I've got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. I've got a love and I feel like it's all mine. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Boost! Do you guys love that song so much? Oh my God, I love that song so much. Do you ever see the movie The Easy A? I love that movie so much. And the part where she gets the birthday card from her grandma and it has that song in there. And she plays it over the whole weekend. And then when her friend asks her on Monday, because she says she she didn't want to hang out over the weekend because of her boyfriend. And she's like, what's he like? And she's like, I feel like I've got a love and I feel like it's all mine. And she like is talking about the lyrics from that song. I love that movie so much. But anyway, I feel like I know all of the old songs lately. What's the song I've been listening to by the Spice Up Your Life, I think, by the Spice Girls. Is that what it's called? Spice Up Your Life? Because, because if you don't know what you don't know is a lot. I am completely obsessed with everything RuPaul's Drag Race, and I am on the second season of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, and I am just loving every bit of it. And um, so anyway, I have been watching it. Now, people have been asking me, no, this isn't sponsored. People have been asking me, where can you watch it? Because um, I didn't know either, right? And I was stupid, and I bought the entire first season over on Amazon Prime for $19.99 because I had to watch it. I had to, you know? Um, but then people were telling me that you could download the World of Wonder app. So I downloaded the app for $3.99. You get a, like a, a, a free trial over there. But then for $3.99 a month or $39.99 for the year, I just went out and got the whole year. You get to watch everything RuPaul's Drag Race over there. Everything World of Wonder. Oh my God, I wish this video was sponsored by World of Wonder. I wish. I love them so much. Um, but you get to see, like, all the U.S. RuPaul's Drag Races, the two seasons of U.K., uh, Canada, Denmark, and then they just posted the Australia one. Alyssa Edwards, boost! <laughs> She's got her whole thing over there. They've got, like, a whole thing of Alyssa Edwards videos, all the Alyssa secrets, which you can also get see on YouTube. There's documentaries. There's all kinds of fantastic things over there. So, um, and the streaming of the first queen, the streaming show of the first queen, I don't want to ruin it for you if you haven't watched it, who won uh, RuPaul's Drag Race UK, it's over there as well. So, there's all kinds of stuff you can watch over there. All right. All right. Let's get into this video. After all of that spoken about, um, I want to give a special birthday shout out first before I do to Jessica, who the other day, I, wait, it was yesterday, said that it was her 42nd birthday and that, um, and she said, and you're a huge part of my daily routine and I'd love a happy birthday and would you be my good Judy? Of course I could be your good Judy. I could be all, we, listen, we could all just be one good, big, good Judy group. <laughs> hey, good Judy. How you doing? Anyway, happy birthday, Jessica. Um, I hope that you have the most amazing, I hope you had the most amazing birthday in the entire, it's your birthday month, you know, it's your birthday month. So anyway, all right, let's get into today's video. Today, I wanna talk about James Charles, do a little bit of an update and where we're at right now. Um, and I kind of had an idea before I started this video um, of what I wanted to talk about. And then it, something changed and I will tell you what happened. First of all, um, I put up on my channel yet or on my Twitter yesterday, I think. Like, if you guys, if I make a video today, what do you guys want to hear about or whatever? And um, because I was to be honest with you, I was gonna do a James Charles update anyway, but I was like, I want to wait a couple days to see what happens because some of the things that I thought would happen by now have not happened. Like, I thought, in all honesty, that at this point, I thought that because now international news, national news. All kinds of news outlets are covering this story. I really, really thought that brands would um, have dropped James Charles at this point, and that has not happened. I thought his channel on YouTube, because this had happened to Shane Dawson and it had happened to other people, um, I thought that it would have been affected in some way, whether like maybe that means being demonetized. That's not happening. I just went and looked. His videos are all monetized as of 7 o'clock, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on what is today, the 8th. Is today the 8th? Yes, today is the 8th. So, I, I mean, really, there have, nothing has happened to James Charles as a result of him making a video where he takes full accountability for his actions. 
if you want to call it that, and where he comes on Twitter and he takes accountability for it. We've really never seen anything like this before, and I'm, to be honest with you, I'm just, I'm baffled, right? Now, James Charles has not tweeted out or put anything out that I have seen um, since his taking accountability video, and I looked. So, a lot of people the other day, when I, I put up, you know, what do you want me to talk about today, um, they had asked me to talk about my response to Blair White's video. So uh, Blair White had made a video, I don't know, about six months or a year ago, I think it was last summer, where she was talking about her interactions with Jeffree Star, and I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that she was privy to this voice note or this receipt that Jeffree Star showed her about James Charles, which was then later discussed in Keemstar's, um, what do you call it, in Keemstar's uh, The Mom's Basement podcast, on and on and on, right? So Blair White came out with a new video, and her new video is called, hold on a second, let me pull it up. Um, her new video is called James Charles is a, and the excuses are getting old, okay? And uh, so I went in and I watched this video, and people want to know what I think of it. I think she's spot on. I think she had like five or six points that she made about this video and why James Charles is not really being held accountable like other people in similar situations. And I agree with her. I, I think that she was spot on. One of the things that, and the video is currently sitting at 218,000 views, and it was posted a day ago. One of the things that was really interesting to me about the video was that towards the end of it, she talks about how um, when she came out and she talked about the Jeffree Star thing and whatever, that she has had since then a lot of influencers, big influencers, reach out to her in DMs or whatnot and basically um, validate what she said in the video about James Charles, okay? And that they are like, oh yeah, we've known about this behind the scenes for a long time. This has been a big problem. And she said even like a couple people like collaborated their own stories. It was like individual stories and then there were stories that... You know, there, be, there was more than one person talking about it, so you knew that it was true. Well, okay, so this is what's interesting to me about it. My first initial response was, you know, I don't understand why, if you're going to make a statement like that, then why not come out and start calling some of those people out? Why not say, okay, Susie Smith or Judy Smith or whoever these people are, like, you're complicit in this. You know that this is going on and you're allowing it to go on and you're not coming out and speaking against it. And I think that this is part of what the problem is, okay? Now I have to tell you, if I was in Blair White's situation, I would be terrified to do the same thing. You're going to, I mean, she even says at the beginning of the video that any time that she comes out against the beauty influencer community, that blah, 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 she gets a lot of crap for it, right? That has been my experience as well. So I totally agree with what she's saying in that statement, okay? To, I don't know, expect that she is going to be the person that's going to call out the five or ten or how two or four, how many ever it is, influencers that are behind the scenes that are saying, yes, this is true and we've done this has gone on for quite some time. Um, I don't expect that of her. I think that is a very, very scary situation to be in, okay? And, um, you know, and I, I think also she's probably thinking, all of these people have firsthand knowledge of it and they're not coming out with it. Why should I, with my secondhand knowledge, when people are just going to, like, you know, criticize and scrutinize me for calling them out, you know? But I'm kind of at this point, I'm like, that's, I think, what needs to happen to some degree is I think that these influencers behind the scenes that have been aware of what has been going on with James Charles that have been keeping their mouths, you know, closed because they don't want it to affect their brand or their reputation or whatever. So they don't say anything at all about it. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe several of them need to get in a video together and say something about it. You know, I think... That was part of what happened to Tati Westbrook is that here she is out here on her her, her own again, you know, and um, she made the video and she said these things. And so it was Tati against all of this, right? Um, you know, and I think <clears throat> there's a lot of interesting conversation right now about why did Tati make the video that she made last year when she came back and basically withdrew all of the statements that she had made. Now, let's just go back and visit the original video. You know, that I think we've all seen a, a thousand times at this point that, you know, she came out and made some very damaging allegations towards James Charles. Allegations that we know now that even if they weren't true then are true today, okay? So what's interesting about those statements is that she then came out a year after that and she re retracted those statements and said that her and James had talked and that they were, <clears throat> you know, like on good terms and whatever. Now people are questioning 
Why did Tati do that? Okay, did Tati do that to save face? Did Tati do that to protect herself? Did, you know, she talks about legal at the beginning of the video. Was there legal stuff going on behind the scenes? You know, if Tati made that video today, would it be received differently? Um, and, I, and I believe if Tati, if that video hadn't come out then and it came out today, I believe that it would be received very differently. I think timing on YouTube is extremely interesting, you know? I mean, I think when we talk about these people that are involved in all of this and all these allegations that are being made, you know, and we're talking about Tati and we're talking about James Charles and we're talking about, you know, his group of people um, that have been his friends for a long time and then retracted support, you know? And then we're talking about Shane Dawson and we're talking about, you know, Trisha Paytas now coming out for him, you know, and saying all these statements against him. And we're talking about uh, Jeffree Star and Jeffree Star supposedly having this voice note and all this kind of stuff, which I'm not really sure, like, in retrospect, how I feel about the whole, like, Jeffree Star, like, kind of, like, and he's always said, it's not my place to speak on this, right? But you threw it out there and you pulled it back. You threw it out there and put it back. We're not, these are very, very serious situations that we're talking about here, okay? These are not, like, jokes to be playing around with. So, I don't know, like, how I feel about all this. It's, it's very, um, I don't know, it's very concerning to me that, uh, like, the conversation now is, like, a lot of other people are saying, well, why did Tati do this, okay? So, now Tati is being criticized again for putting out a statement and pulling it back. I don't know that I think it was the smartest idea. I don't, Okay. I don't know if there were so many people that were coming against Tati at that point because like Shane Dawson sainted Jeffree Star, when James Charles lost 3 million subscribers and then he came back and he gained them all back, he was re-sainted as well, okay? That's part of the problem of what's going on right now, okay? Is that people are like, well, we already went through this with James Charles once. We're not going to unsubscribe to find out that... But the problem is, is that James Charles has come out and said that these things are true. It's completely a different situation. And then there's a lot of conversation about Jeffree Jeffree Star, you know, and people are like, well, Jeffree Star knew that this was going on. He put this receipt out. Jeffree Star has been right all along. All praise Jeffree Star. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I got a true crime book club. You know, I do. Okay. I got a true crime book club that I run with my good genie Mel. Hey Mel, how are you doing? Okay. So Mel is not just a true crime book club owner. Okay. She's also a crocheter. <laughs> she is also a fitness expert at this point. Okay. She's also a chef. And she's also my good Judy, and I love her to death. So anyway, but you know, in a lot of these stories that we read, uh, one of the things that comes out is uh, is prisoner testimony, okay? And what that is, is when, you know, you have these people that are incarcerated, and then they come out, and like somebody that they talk to in prison will come out and say, like, well, they said this, or they said this, okay? And they're often made a key witness in the situation. But just because that person, and this is what is so interesting to me about where Stan culture really comes into play with all of this, whereas we can look at that situation, right? I think we just read about a situation where, why can't I figure out, or why can't I remember which case it was? It wasn't the Chris Waits, uh, Watts caught case. Um, it wasn't the Casey Anthony case. I can't remember, but we just read about a case like this where one of the inmates came out and spoke against um, somebody that they were incarcerated with. Well, a big issue about all of that was the fact that, like, they're an incar incarcerated prisoner themselves, right? So their character, it comes into play, right? Like, it's questioned. Like, who is this person really? Like, their character is questioned as to whether or not we should believe them or whether or not, okay, is this just one thing that was said and then they're still, like, you know, maybe not the greatest person in the world or whatever, I don't think that anybody would look at that situation and say, okay, this might be true. Maybe this person did give them, you know, testimony or did give them a confession to some degree. And that part could be true. But they're still in prison for something that they did that is not the greatest thing in the world. Okay. And we can still hold them accountable for that. In pop culture, that doesn't seem to be the case. I don't know why we really struggle with that. And Blair White said this in her video, and I, and I thought it was so profound. She said, we really have, like, with when it comes to YouTube, we have a hard time, like, holding two negative thoughts at the same time. Like, that, you know, and a lot of people are talking about this, and a lot of people are just kind of, like, saying, hey, it's just really not that big of a deal. Now they're defending Jeffree Star. Well, if Jeffree Star said these things, then that must mean that he's the greatest person in the entire world. I'm not really sure why Jeffree Star can't be a nasty individual and has done things that I think, to me, to be honest, are pretty, like inexcusable that he has not taken accountability for, right? So, and this is not about Jeffree Star, but I'm just saying, I don't know why he can't have a believable statement 
but still be a crap person. Like, I don't know why, just because he was right about this. And this is where we, it, it, it does, I think, we say it's not drama, but we play it out to be drama. It's like this drama game, right? Where everybody has an opinion and everybody's like, well, I agree with Jeffrey on this, or I agree with Tati on this, or I agree with Shane on this. And this is where I said these things are being played out, like not where they appropriately should be, but they're being played out in the court of like fans and stands on YouTube and Twitter. And that's very sad because if that's the case, then really all James Charles has to figure out how to do is something to appease the masses. He And this is why he did the video, okay? This is why David Dobrik came out with not one but two videos, okay? That they realize that there's not going to be anything real that they're held to, so they have to come out with something that will appease the masses. If they appease the masses and YouTube is like, oh, okay, you're doing well, or the brands are like, oh, okay, like everybody has forgiven you, you're a better person, then the brands can forgive that as well and they can continue to work with these people. YouTube doesn't have an issue with it. They don't have to make a decision. Everybody's happy. Let's go back to how it was. I think that's what James Charles thought he was doing with this video, that it was going to kind of just take everything and make it go away. And that's really not what's happening. And people are continuing to talk about this. And here we are, weeks out, weeks out, weeks out. And James Charles is not being held accountable. And it's the first time we've ever seen this. And so then the question is, why is James Charles not being held accountable? Okay. And that's where, you know, it was interesting to me because in Blair White's video, some of the points that she made, I totally agreed with. Some of the parts I agreed with, I 50% 50, 50 agreed with, 50-50, 50% agreed with because some of the things that she said, I think there are other people out there that have been held to that same accountability like Jeffree Star, whereas Jeff, James Charles isn't and they're in the same category so I don't know why like James Charles gets away with all of this. Do I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that he has a younger audience? Yes. Do I think there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on behind the scenes? Yes. Do I think, and I said this last week and I can't believe it hasn't happened yet, do I think that we're going to start seeing a lot of people unfollow James Charles? Like I think the day, like we have plateaued off, but the day where I think that things are just going to go boom like that is like right upon us. And I don't know when it's going to happen. I think like, it's weird to say this, but these decisions are kind of made behind the scenes. Okay. And I think that something's going to happen where it's just going to be, and I, and I said the other day, like a house of cards, but I didn't want to use that reference, but I think it's going to be something but I think it's going to be something like that, you know, and I've continued to look and Emma Chamberlain still follows him, you know, and that's like somebody to me that she's kind of like she refronted him. And then like, I, I think these people know, like we made the mistake before by refronding him this time, if we unfriend him, I mean, this is it. We can't go back and like refund these people. Okay. And I think that the fans and the stands are going to hold the friends and the people around James Charles accountable. I think they are going to say, if you continue to support, support him and follow him on Instagram and do videos with him or do this with him or whatever you're doing at some point, if you continue to do that, then you're in that same category as well. And I think it's just going to take one person, one major person to unfollow James Charles. And then I think it's going to be a domino effect. I think it's going to be one company and then it's going to be a domino effect. I really, really do. And then I don't know what, like, you know, then I think we're, that's where I think like James Charles said in his video that he's taking some time away from social media, which is why we haven't seen anything. James Charles not being, I mean, he is so consistently on social media 24 hours a day. I don't know how he has his phone down. So I know that he is watching everything that is going on. I, I really do hope that James Charles takes some time to work with somebody professionally and figuring out what is really going on here, okay? That this is really more serious than just desperation. And the fact that he said that he had been working with somebody and that's what he came up with is like, well, where did you come up with this? I mean, were you watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch at two o'clock in the morning and you're like, desperation? I mean, where did you come up with this idea? And the, I think what's really even scarier about that, you guys, is that he believes that. Like he believes that to be true because otherwise if James Charles got on video and he said, you guys like, obviously the things that you're saying, like, I mean, I already took accountability for it. So why not get in a video and say, yeah, like there's, I don't know what's going on with me, but I really need to figure it out. And I'm taking six months off and I'm going to work with somebody, you know, specifically, and I'm going to try to figure it out. And then I'll, I'll hopefully be back and I can bring you guys a new and improved person that will take responsibility for my actions going forward. Instead of coming out and saying that it was about desperation, I think, you know, he had everybody for a little bit like, okay, this is a sincere moment maybe from Jeff, from James Charles. <laughs> 
Joe Star was gonna say. But you know, and then he lost everybody with it. That was the point for me where I was like, girl, seriously? Desperation? Like, I think we've all felt desperation at one point or another. But you know what I mean? Like, we're not acting out on that, you know, not in this manner. So I don't, I don't know. Like it's it, I, it it's very, very serious. I will tell you what's interesting to me is when I originally covered doing um, the, so the, the desperation piece to me is just a piss poor excuse. I think anybody can agree with that, okay? And I think that was pandering to his young audience that were like, oh, I totally relate to that. You know, I've always wanted this too, you know? So anyway, um, but the thing I wanted to say was when I originally did my um, video on James Charles uh, taking accountability, holding myself accountable, which is now sitting at, let's see, 7 million views. Um, when I talked about it, he had something like at that point, like 115,000 likes. This was what, like a, a week, one week ago. He had like 115,000 likes and like 4.5,000 dislikes. And remember, and this was like within hours, like three hours. So within three hours of posting the video, he already had 115,000 likes on it. And I said in the video, I was like, I'm very confused about this. Something seems like it's, I, I didn't say he was buying likes or dislikes. I just said, this is confusing to me, right? This many people right off the gate like the video. Have you ever gone to a video and it's like you're watching it and you feel one way, but then you start reading the comments and you look at the likes to dislikes ratio and you're like, it's really, to be honest with you, it's a sociological study. And I think James Charles reads a lot of this kind of stuff or knows a lot about this stuff. But it's like you're watching the video and you're like, no, I don't agree with any of this. But then you look at the likes and people really like the video or the comments seem to be in favor of the video and you're like, Am I wrong? Like, what am I seeing here, right? And you, it starts messing with you and you start questioning it, even though you know what you see. So I get a James Charles video today, right? This is a week later. It is sitting at 263,000 likes and 179,000 dislikes. You guys, that is not a good like to dislike ratio. I mean, he has almost as many dislikes to likes. That was not the case in the first 24 hours. And the opinion, nothing's really changed in a week that would make so many people go over there and change it. And the other thing that's interesting to me is that within a matter of a week, like within three hours, he had 100 plus some thousand likes on it. But in a week, he's only gained another 100,000? What? But he's gotten 175,000 dislikes in a week? No, 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 no. There is, James Charles has done something to this video. I don't know what it is. In my opinion, allegedly, it looks like the numbers have been messed with. It looks like they have been screwed with somehow because, and the only thing I can think is that either he can't handle the truth of how people are going to receive his video or he's trying to manipulate the audience. So when you go to this video, there are so many likes on it that you'll think, well, maybe I should like this video if you're younger or if you're, you know, easily persuaded or whatever. I don't know. Like it just, there's no way those numbers are accurate. You know what I mean? And when you read the comments in there and a lot of comments have been deleted, but a lot of comments are highly, like all the top comments underneath there are pretty highly critical of James Charles. So then it makes us wonder, you know, what's going to happen next. And I have to tell you, Tati is getting... A lot of negative criticism, like I said, online. But I did receive this comment the other day, and I wanted to say something. This is when my video, when I talked about Tati's return. I, somebody said, I just hope Tati sees the comments of fans who want her back on YouTube. But also, we don't know what's going on in her life since she tried to... Okay, and it goes on and speculates about personal stuff. And that might be why she's taking a break for so long. Not to mention, I think, the legal cases. I think she's not wanting to come back because she doesn't know what's going to happen with all of that. Maybe she's just taking some time to herself. Maybe she'll never return. I don't know. You know, I don't really know, like... At this point, if Tati returns, I think people are, I mean, in the middle of all of this, I think people are going to demand an answer from her. And I think she knows that to post a video of doing like my favorite drugstore, you know, mascaras or something. I think for her to do that, like people would demand in the comment sections, like, why are you not talking about James? Like, I mean, that's the world we live in today. And so she knows she can't come back right now. And this is going to take a long time for this to kind of pass and for her to come back with a video. Her next video back after her doing the video that she did before is going to be just some random video. I think a lot of people that love her would love that but I also think she's in the middle of all this and people are going to want to know like well what's the next thing you know that you have to say about this what's the truth Tati was it the first video or was it the second video you know what I mean I don't know there's a lot of things behind the scenes that I think we are not privy to when I say that decisions are made behind the scenes this is what I mean by that I think that a lot of companies and I think a lot of like people like influencers are talking like I think there's probably conversations between Judy and Sally Smith and they're saying should we unfollow James when are we going to do it? You do it on Friday at 1 o'clock. I'll do it on Friday at 2 o'clock. Okay. And then once they do that, it's just going to be 
I think that's what we're going to see happen because nobody wants their brand or their reputation to be affected negatively as well, right? And then the question is going to be interesting to see who is standing by James Charles. And I think James knows that because I think that's how the, the beauty influencer world works behind the scenes. And I think James knows that. And I think he knows that one of these days that, um, you know, somebody's going to, uh, like, this is all going to start because he's been privy to conversations like that behind the scenes with other influencers before. So I, I think he knows that it's just a matter of time before it's him and he's next. When that happens, I think we're going to see a big resurgence of all of this again. But who knows? So anyway, let me know what you think about all that in the comment section below. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.